Welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Introduction to Paninian Grammar. In this course so far, we have been studying the process of speech production as described in the Paninian grammatical tradition. We have gone into some details of this process and we have seen how the Paninian grammatical tradition has described right from the internal cognitive process up to the external audible speech production in some detail. Then we were studying the features of these sounds noted down by the Paninian grammatical traditions. We noted that there were quite a few features noted down by the Paninian grammatical tradition and then we started studying the functions assigned to them by the Paninian grammatical traditions. One of the functions namely the term Savarana assigned to sounds which have similar features we studied in the previous lecture. In this lecture we shall study the next feature namely the criterion for selection of a substitution as well as substituent. So, we studied the process of speech production by using this source namely Paninia Shiksha and the verses that are listed down. They are Atma Buddhya Sametyarthan Mano Yungte Vivakshaya Manah Kaya Agni Mahanti Saprera Yati Marutam Marutas tu rasi charan mandram janayatisvaram sodirno murdhyavihato vaktramapadya marutah varanan janayate. Once again, the purpose of reciting these verses again and again and again is very clear and very obvious that you should get more and more familiar with, with these verses and because you have heard them so many times they should be part of your own understanding so far. And then there are these stages of speech production that are described in these verses and we have noted down the stages here. We have already studied them in detail. They are Atma Buddhya Sametyarthan the first, Mano Yungte Vivakshaya the second and we say that these two they form the cognitive aspect of this particular process which is also termed as the cause and the remaining ones they are the physical or the biological aspects of this particular process. They are also termed as the effects. So, the third stage is Manah Kaya Mahanti, the fourth one is Saprerayati Marutam, the fifth one is Marutas Tu Rasi Charan Mandram Janayatiswaram, the sixth one is Sodirno Murdhyavihato, the seventh one is Vaktramapadya Marutaha, and finally Paranjanayate when the audible speech is produced. We noted down <coughs> the first function of the feature, namely the term Savarana which is a kind of super feature assigned to the commonality of the features of the sound which allows the grammarian in our case Panini to, uh, to achieve brevity. By assigning the term Savarana, the sounds can be further grouped and then one of them can be mentioned in the initial enunciation and by a rule let us say 1169 Panini declares that this one sound mentioned in the 14 Pratyahara Sutras represents all its homogeneous sounds. In this way Panini achieves the brevity as far as his system is concerned. That was the first 
function of the features of sounds that we studied in the previous lecture. Now the second function of these features of sounds this is what we are going to study in this lecture. So criteria for selection of a substitute in place of a substituent when multiple substitutes get stated by the pratyahara or other metalinguistic devices. This is the function. This is the second function of these features of sounds and I repeat criteria for selection of a substitute in place of a substituent especially when multiple substitutes get stated by the pratyahara or other metalinguistic devices. So criteria for selection of a substituent in whose place a particular substitute is to be stated. This is a similar kind of function which is assigned to these features of sounds. It is to be noted that the first function is the criteria for selection of a substitute in place of a substituent and the second function is criteria for selection of a substituent in whose place a particular substitute is to be stated. These are the important functions that we shall study in this lecture. Obviously these features are based on the explanation of the process, the process of speech production in which the journey of the tongue, the position of the tongue can also be explained. Now let us look at the first function stated in the previous slide namely the criterion for selection of a substitute also known as antaratamya pariksha, antaratamya pariksha namely investigation into which sound as a substitute is most similar to the substituent. So you take the set of sounds which are stated as the substitute and study each one of them based on the place of articulation and the effort of articulation and so on and then match and see which sound comes closer to the sound that is to be substituted and then substitute that sound in place of the substituent. This is the process that is followed. This is what is meant by antaratamya pariksha. So for example, sometimes many get stated as substitute in place of a substituent. Amongst those many that get stated as substitutes by the pratyahara or for example by the other metalinguistic devices like ku, chu, tu, tu and pu, there is one substitute that has to replace the substituent and in order to investigate which one is the closest substitute we need to do this antaratamya pariksha. And for this the bahya prayatna is used as a device by the Paninian grammatical tradition. For the concept of Savarana, the Abhyantara Prayatna as well as the place of articulation Sthana was used and now as far as the Antara Tamya Pariksha is concerned, choosing the closest substitute in place of a substituent is concerned, the Bahya Prayatna is used by the Paninian grammatical tradition. However, we note that even in such a case, the Paninian grammatical tradition keeps using the word Savarna. So this is supported by the source. Let us study this source. The source is the celebrated text called Vayakarana Siddhanta Kaumudi written by Vattoji Dikshit and this passage is taken from this text. It reads like this, Bahya prayatnascha yadyapi savarana saudhnyayam nopayuktaha tathapi 
antaratamya parikshayam upayujyante. And I repeat, bhaiha prayatnascha yadyapi savarna saudhnyayam nopayuktaha tathapi antaratamya parikshayam upayujyante. What it means is, even if the external effort of articulation is not used for deciding the savarnas, which sounds are homogeneous with which other sounds, it is still used in the investigation of the most similar of the substitutes, which is the closest substitute. In order to decide about this, in order to investigate into this, the Baiha Prayatnas are used extensively by the Paninian grammatical tradition. So let us take the example 8462 which is Jhayo ho nyatarasyam, Jhayo ho anyatarasyam. This sutra consists of three words, Jhayaha which is the 5 slash 1 of Jhay, Haha which is the 6 slash 1 of Ha the consonant and then Anyatarasyam which means optionally. The word continued from the previous sutra is Purva Savarana, homogeneous with the earlier Purvasya Savarana, homogeneous with the earlier sound. All these words put together we can say that following is the meaning of this particular sutra. In place of H, the consonant H, which comes immediately after a Chai, substitute optionally a sound which is homogeneous, obviously homogeneous to both, homogeneous with Jai primarily, but also with H. Now, 8462 says, and wh what it says we have already seen. Now let us put it in the form of an equation and try to explain it. So if you have jai plus he, if this is the given, then substitute he by a sound which is homogeneous with the earlier stated sound that is a jai. So this can be represented in the form of an equation in the following, following manner. So if you have jai plus her given, applying 8462 now, the output would be jai plus purva savarana of jai in place of her. Now what is jai? Jai is a pratyahara that stands for sound stated in between the pratyahara sutra 8 to 12. If we try to understand what is jai using the traditional sound inventory, we have to say that Jai stands for all the consonants that come in columns 4, 3, 2 and 1. This is what is Jai. Jabhai, Ghadha Dash, Jabagada Dash, Kapha Chatatha Chatatav and Kapai 8 to 12. Consonant 4, 3, 2 and one in the traditional sound inventory. So if her comes immediately after any of these sounds, her is to be substituted by the savarana of jai. Now the features of jai are the place of articulation namely kantha, velam, talu, palate, murdhan, roof of the oral cavity danta, tooth or teeth and oshthau namely the lips. The abhyantara prayatna of jai is sprishth, contact, touch of the tongue with the place of articulation. This is what we have already studied. Now if we look at the features of her, we note that the place of articulation of her is kantha or vilam. And the abhyantar prayatna of her is vivruta or open. The important point is the abhyantar prayatna of jai is prashta and the abhyantar prayatna of her is vivruta. Now, by 1.1.9 and 10, 
only those sounds are called savarna or homogeneous which have similar sthana and abhyantara prayatna. In our case now, jai and her do not share abhyantara prayatna at all. Even if there is some similarity of sthana between her and ku which is part of jai, ka, kh, ga and gh, they are part of jai and they share the sthana with her. So even if partially we can say jai does share the place of articulation with her, okay, but definitely all of the jais they do not share their abhyantara prayatna with her. The abhyantara prayatna of jai as we saw earlier is sprashta whereas the abhyantara prayatna of her is vivrata. So now the question is what is the word savarna referring to here? And the answer is that the word savarna refers to the homogeneous sound of jai. So if we have say for example the followed by her, her should be replaced according to 8462 by any savarna of the which is jai. Now there are four choices that we have. The Th, dh and n. Obviously, the is also a choice. So, there are four choices. Th, th, dh and th, th, dh and n, omitting the. Now, the question is, which one is to be selected amongst these four? This now we shall decide on the basis of the Bahya Prayatna. This selection should be now based on the basis of Bahya Prayatna. Let us now look at the Bahya Prayatna of her and the Bahya Prayatna of these sounds and then compare and then see which of these four comes closest to her. So the Bahya Prayatna of her is Nada, Ghosha, Samvara and Mahaprana. Resonance, voice, closure, and more breath and her is called aspirate. Now all these four features they match with only one of the four choices namely the features of only the. The also possesses these four features as by her prayatna namely nada, gosha, samvara and mahaprana. Some features are similar to that of th as well as n, namely the mahaprana is similar with th and nada, ghosha and samvara are the features of n as well. But n is not mahaprana and th even though is mahaprana, its features are not nada, ghosha and samvara. They are Shvasa, Aghosha and Vivara. So, not all features of Th and N match with that of her. So, they get eliminated as the choices. And so now, there is only one choice that remains and that is the. So, for example, if you have the, which is a Jai followed by her, the resultant output after application of 8462 would be the followed by the. So, her gets substituted by the. Similarly, if g which is a jai followed by her, then application of 8462 returns the output as g followed by g. Gh is the Purva Savarana of G, which is also closest to her. Similarly, if you have J followed by her, where J is a Jai, then in place of her, we get the substitute J, which is the 
closest to her and also the savarna of j similarly if we have d followed by her then in place of her we have d which is the purva savarna sound of this d and lastly if we have b followed by her her is to be replaced by b which is the purva savarna of b and also the closest to her because the bahya prayatna of all these five sounds gh dh gh j dh and bh they are the closest amongst the substitutes available to her namely nad samvar and ghosh and also mahaprana all these five sounds have these features have these bahya prayatnas so if we look at the concrete example here are the examples so if we have a compound like pad followed by hati in which here we have the similar situation described in the left hand side we have the followed by her so now we apply 8462 and substitute her by dh and we get the word paddhati paddhati similarly if we have vag followed by har also a compound we have the condition namely g followed by h and so we apply 8462 and so we get h substituted by the purva savarna of g namely gh so we get the form vagghar next we have aj followed by hal where we have j as a jhai followed by h so we apply 8462 and substitute h by the purva savarna of j and so that purva savarna is j which is the closest to her as well and finally if we have gubb plus has where we have b which is a jhai followed by h we substitute h by bh which is savarna of the purva sound b and which is also closest with reference to h in terms of the bahya prayatnas which are nad ghosh and samvar and also mahaprana in this way 8462 applies the basis for the application of 8462 is the bahya prayatna in this case nad ghosh and samvar and also mahaprana resonance voice openness and having more breadth or being aspirate so the explanation once again is the following the bahya prayatna is used as a criterion to select one substitute in place of many thereby giving the process of substitution a criterion based structure the process of substitution which is the main process in the grammar of panini is not based on any haphazard whims of the grammarians it is based on a particular criterion which is based on the features of the sounds that get produced in the process of speech production so this is a structure based on a criterion this criterion is in the form of features of sounds this criterion can be tested and also explained using the modern terminology and technology the movement of the tongue and the compromise it has to make in the fast speech in reaching the place of articulation of the next sound to be uttered is what is at the base of this entire process and so there is this compromise made by the tongue which cannot reach in time the next place of articulation so it stops 
at the nearby place of articulation which is termed as the compromise. And this compromise gets reflected in this particular sutra and similar sutras. Now the next function is the criteria for selection of a substituent. So when a grammatical operation is stated in which substitutes are stated with reference to a pratyahara which contains certain sounds whose features are not at all related to the substituent then the feature set comes to help and the grammar says that a substituent matching with the features of a substitute does not exist. So select only those substituents which match with the features of the substitute and the one which does not do not make it a substituent at all. This is how a substituent gets selected for the process of substitution using these features. Let us take a concrete example 8458 in the Ashtadhyayi which is Anusvarasya Yai Parasavarnaha. Let us study this sutra in detail. This sutra has three words Anuswarasya 6 slash 1 of Anuswara, Yai is 7 slash 1 of Yai and Parasavarnaha is 1 slash 1 of Parasavarna. Parasavarna means the sound which is homogeneous with the latter sound. So all this put together the meaning of 8458 can be stated in the following manner. Immediately before a yai sound, yai sound, substitute a sound which is homogeneous to the latter that is a yai in place of an anuswara. To put this in the form of an equation we can say that anuswara plus yai and we apply 8458 and then the next step of derivation would be parasavarna plus yai. In place of Anuswara comes the Parasavarna. To explain it further, we can say that this means Savarna of Yai plus Yai. Parasavarna stands for Savarna of Yai. This is how it gets into the form of an output. The first step of derivation can be explained as Anuswara plus Yai. The next step of explanation is Parasavarna plus Yai closely following 8458 in letters and then we have Savarna of Yai plus Yai as the final output. Let us take a concrete example. Here is the word Grantha for you in which the Anuswara appears immediately after A over here followed by Tha which is a Yai. So we have this Anuswara followed by the immediately. So here is the scope of application of 8458 and we apply it and then we substitute na in place of this Anuswara, na in place of Anuswara. So immediately before the appears an Anuswara over here, so it gets substituted by a Savarna of the. Amongst the four savarnas of th, namely th, d, dh, and n, only n is nasal. Th, th, d, and dh, they are not nasals. So, only n is nasal, which matches with the anuswara as far as the place of articulation is concerned, and so this n becomes the substitute which matches with the substituent and so we get the form grantha with na coming here. In case of kundam rathena which is an example taken from the Vyakarana Mahabhashya of Patanjali an anuswara appears immediately before r. Now according to 8458 this Anuswara needs to be replaced by a Savarna of R. R is part of Yai. Yai includes 
द सेमी वॉबल्स य व र ल एज वेल एज ऑल द क्लास कॉन्सोनेंट्स द फिफ्थ कॉलम द फोर्थ कॉलम द थर्ड द सेकेंड एज वेल एज द फर्स्ट यई इंक्लूड्स ऑल द कॉन्सोनेंट्स एक्सेप्ट श श स एंड ह That is what is present here. So kundam rathena consists of r immediately coming after this anuswara, or we can say the anuswara comes immediately before r, which is yai. Now, according to eight four fifty eight, this anuswara needs to be replaced by a savarna of r. Then we know from the features of r that amongst the antasthas. the semi vowels only r does not have a nasalized version all three y v and l they all have a nasalized version only r does not have a nasalized version so now the grammar says that since there is no substitute that matches with the features of the substituent let there not be any substituent at all and let there not be any process of a substitute so let kundam rathena remain as it is kundam rathena no substituent chosen to summarize this entire discussion on the process of speech production we just now saw the second function assigned to the features of the sound produced before that we had seen the feature features being used to formulate another super feature savarna which is used for the purpose of brevity now we summarize the entire process of the speech production as described in the paninian grammar in the following manner the discussion on the process of speech production as described in the tradition of paninian grammar can be summarized by saying that the grammatical tradition of sanskrit did notice features of the sounds thus produced it classified sounds in accordance with some of these features it also used these features as a device for effective and brief grammatical description it also recognized the importance of the cognitive part in the overall process of speech production it developed the theory that the audible speech is just one part of this entire process and in fact it is the most external part of the process the internal part is the most important and can be expressed using various kinds of means so the external part is just an expression this knowledge of the indian grammatical tradition was considered advanced at some point in time when the europeans came into contact with the tradition of the paninian grammar it is in fact this advanced knowledge of features of sounds that is said to have influenced and to have given rise to a new branch of phonetics in the modern world in the discussion so far in this course we studied the description found in the tradition of paninian grammar this material can be compared with the modern knowledge about the process of speech production technological help is also available where software in the field of articulatory phonetics can show distinct pictures of this process with respect to each and every sound this and other related topics we reserve for an advanced level course this is the point where our discussion on the process of speech production comes to an end now before finishing today's lecture let us follow the practice we have been following of reciting the mangala charana from yet another celebrated text this time from a commentary called tatvabodhini 
on the Vayakarana Siddhanta Kaumudi of Bhattoji Dikshita. So this commentary Tattva Bodhini has this Mangala Charana and I recite Natva Vishveshwaram Sambam Kritvacha Guru Vandanam Siddhanta Kaumudi Vyakhya Kriyate Tattva Bodhini. I repeat Natva Vishveshwaram Sambam Kritvacha Guru Vandanam Siddhanta Kaumudi Vyakhya Kriyate Tattva Bodhini. And the five sutras of today are taken from the first pada of the fifth adhyaya, the first sub chapter of the fifth chapter, and they are Prak Kritat Chaha. Ugavadi Bhyoyat Kambalacha Saudnyayam Vibhasha Havirapu Padibhya and Tasmai Hitam. I repeat Prakrita Chaha Ugavadi Bhyoyat Kambalacha Saudnyayam Vibhasha Havirapu Padibhya Tasmai Hitam. Thank you for your attention.